TSB Talk Sport Business on Talk 100.3. You with Lachlan Kitchen and Neil Lodge. You can join the conversation 0586861003. We've had some great guests this hour. Uh, Marcus Stoinis. Uh, we've had the legendary star of uh, TV here in Dubai. Uh, Reem has been joining us, Reem Alhuni. But we are joined in the studio, Neil, by a man regarded as the first ever Punjabi rapper. He's been making music since 2002. And Bohemia, an American rapper of Pakistani origin, the songwriter, the poet, the record producer, is joining us here in the studio. Can we get a round of applause for having man in here? Yes. Bohemia, thank you very much for coming in to Talk 100.3. Thank you so much for having me. Great to have you here. Appreciate it. So you, you got into Dubai, uh, and, and we know that you're performing tonight. Yes. How's the prep for the performance first up? Uh, it's it's awesome. I uh, visited the club last night, mm-hmm. did a brief sound check, and um, I think it's uh, it should be a fun show. It's a beautiful place to perform at. I'm super honored to be there. Right. I mean, a lot goes in, you know, when you're planning a live performance, right? You obviously need to have, have a feel of the place, need to get uh, the sound and, and the, the technicalities right, the lights Correct. right, all of this. And add to that your own performance. Correct. How do you check, tick mark everything that's going on uh, for a live performance then? Uh, I think uh, experience come into play. I've been doing this since 2002. As Sketch mentioned, I uh, started off as a keyboard player. Mm -hmm. So my childhood uh, years was actually being a background musician myself, part of a band. Um, uh, you know, part of four or five people that perform on stage, just and then from keyboard player to a poet to from poet to you know, I never really wanted to be to to tell you the truth. I never really wanted to be up on the on the stage. Up no, in the front. you're kidding me. I uh, had no interest in doing that, uh, but that's I guess that was my calling. So um, earlier years, childhood years, um, uh, was of just a preparation that I was given without even realizing I was being prepared for such a job, mm-hmm. which is uh, working with musicians, doing the setup, doing the sound setup, um, and being a cr- critical part of a, of a band and working in, you right. know, with other people like sound people and making the, making the job happen. So in, now, fast forward as an as a artist myself, I am well versed uh, with the idea of what a sound man does, what musicians right. do. Yeah, yes. So yes, it, it comes help. That, that, that's that's really touched on me. Someone who's I've been playing gigs for twenty years, and no. uh, the singers, the hated member of the band, Neil, because everyone's got drums and keyboards and amps, and the singer's just there with his mic <laughs> and or her mic, and usually at the end of the gig, they're the ones talking to all the girls. We're like, can you help us? Like, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> wrap up the wires. Yeah, come and, on, yeah, guys. Yeah, I mean, on, we've got huh? time for that. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you probably now that's probably why your, your team probably like you more because yes. you you know what it's like to be. The the, the, not the support members, but you know the engine room of of the group. Correct, correct. And then and then you you couple that with the fact that when you listen to my tracks, um, a majority of the tracks that I'm known for are actually my compositions. That's me sitting in the studio recording. I'm the keyboard player. I'm the guitarist. Yes. I'm the drummer. I'm I'm composing those songs. I'm the one who wrote the lyrics. I'm the one who some majority of my albums. I'm the one who actually engineered them. Uh, and uh, finished the entire CD and just got it mastered. And then the majority of my CDs, I am the Photoshop guy that make the CD covers. Majority of my CDs, I am the Photoshop guy that make the CD covers. Oh no. So I am like vertically integrated with, with my, my, my product. Um, so that also becomes uh, very uh, helpful when I'm I'm performing. It's it's I'm not performing. Please someone. don't tell me you make your own coffee as well. I do uh, <laughs> actually make my own coffee. I, I uh, we've, I have, we've got one similarity there. I make yeah. my own coffee, so yeah. Yeah, I mean. but I take my coffee black, so there's nothing in it. So it's very easy. Yeah, That's I know the how I'm part. the same. We're yeah. the same here. Well, yeah. we, we know how we like it. Yeah, we want to make our own coffee. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This weekend, uh, what, what a great place you're playing at. Uh, you're going to be at uh, the Five uh, Palm Jumeirah uh, when you're doing gigs how how is the crowd different between being inside and then being at a pool club on the beach i i love i think the intimate crowds are are more fun to perform for i've, I've gotten a chance to perform for you know recently i had a gig in lahore where we were like performing for about seventy thousand plus people yeah and that that becomes kind of uh, a, con- a situation where I'm not commanding and controlling the entire crowd. I'll feel like that. Yeah. I think the intimate crowds are more fun with where I can actually look people in the eyes, get the response, sometimes even do songs that they're requesting and, and have a better interaction. So tonight's uh, show at um, 
at Armani, I think it's going to be one of those, and I'm really, yeah. really excited for that. It's, it's a fa- fabulous place, obviously, Burj Khalifa, Armani, Privé tonight. Uh, one of our presenters, Vardaman, is going to do the opening act. He's going to do his Banana Banana song. And, uh, you know, he, he's a good lad. But, you know, this is something that we want to know. Uh, when, when, when one prepares for a life in media, yeah, you become a public figure. You then there will be questions asked about your life, about your lifestyles, about how many tattoos you have, and what do these tattoos mean, and why did you get those tattoos? Too much of public eye. Do you do you enjoy it, or do you you'd rather that you know? Listen, I'll perform, then I'll go back in my man cave. Uh back to my man cave. I think I'm. Uh, but uh, just the uh, just the thought of uh, bringing. Uh, taking people away for a few minutes uh for an hour at a show uh from their mundane lives uh we today's world puts a lot of uh you know hardship on people i perform across the world and one similarity that i have is is just taking people away for a minute just having them excited yeah. happy and enjoy it's a, it's a very very uh, uh satisfying thing to do where where we as an artist get a chance to do where we actually serve people uh, and bring well, it gives people a voice. You give a voice to other people who who can't speak for themselves. Uh, you you could say that. I I don't want to take too much credit for that. I think okay. I'm majority of my lyrics and my subject matters are very close to me personally. Uh, but then yeah, a lot of people relate to them, and that's uh, that's a fascinating. Yeah, I, I'll I'll tell you something over here. Yeah, you know, you, he he said that you know he, the the idea of giving them the pleasure, the moment of joy, right? One of your songs took joy away from me. Oh. And, and that was Jaguar. I was a, I was dating a girl, and she would only play that one song. Okay. pehle baby Jaguar And I was like, maybe I can only drive a Maruti. So it's a it's a story about a girl who's saying that, hey, give me a Jaguar if you want my love. So <laughs> there you go. I mean, there, there, there you go. go. Right, so so it's not me that took the joy away, sir. It was that girl. Like, yes. Uh, I just was the narrator. You you I were the narrator. <laughs> I mean, it, it was that story, and I was like. Bohemia, yeah. you meet me and I'll tell you, yeah. please, no Jaguars next time on. Yeah, a lot of my tracks are, are very true to um, things that people go through in real life. And I think that's something before I invented the genre. The, 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 the Daisy Hip Hop kind of genre. Correct. Yeah. I, I coined the term Daisy Hip Hop uh, in 2002, which now became known as a genre. Um, I think the act of, of just... Um, doing that kind of almost didn't exist in our world mm-hmm. we had predominantly bollywood music which yeah. i love but it was sort sort of in like nothing against it but it was sort of in a fairy tale land people just Ooh. running around on grass <laughs> dancing with 30 girls behind them and wearing fancy clothes i think that's not real life or subject matters were really kept uh, at, at a bay meaning we we're just discussing some general in sense um, so, so my music goes really close to the the heart of some of the issues. Whether I, I speak about, you know, hardship that youth goes through around the world, yep. whether it's drug issues, whether it's you know, uh, just uh, young rebellious lifestyle issues. Uh, I think that was pretty much missing uh, in our in our world, and I, I'm happy to have brought forth a genre in which it gives voice to. And now a lot of kids are rappers, and they're doing phenomenal job across you know India, Pakistan, True. around the world, the Desi diaspora. But what they are actually doing is they're discussing facts and matters that are 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 real, and I like that. I think. No, I mean, t- talking hard facts is it's not very easy. And, and when yeah. you, you know, put it with music, it reaches uh, to, you know, a, a larger audience. Correct. But t- tell me something, all of these thoughts, all of these hard facts of life, uh, do, do they stem from, uh, you know, your personal liking of uh, the writings of Ghalib or Fez? Uh, because, you know, when, 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 when they used to write, they used to write about life. They used to write about the realities of life. Yes. You know, it wasn't fluff. And, and And, and does, so does it stream from there on, is the inspiration from there? A hundred percent. I started writing at the age of eight or nine, and my predominantly I wrote uh, in Urdu. And when mm-hmm. I I converted to Punjabi, uh, it actually writing in Punjabi is easier than writing in Urdu. Okay. okay. Um, it's um, uh, you're hundred percent right. I think, um, but I sort of sh- kind of just sharpened the tool. I think we were pretty obtuse with the idea of of shairi generally in Bollywood right. or and in, and the pop music scene. I wanted to bring that acute factor in which you know let's discuss things that really touch. The, the you know the fact the, the the issues that the youth is going I think that's why a lot of youth c- connects with me True. and my style of uh, poetry there is a method to the madness so I've been a fan of uh, hip hop music ever mm-hmm. since I moved to California at a young age 
And um, I did not, I, I think uh, we cannot become rappers by just looking at music videos or listening to songs. I did extensive amount of study in terms of reading books mm -hmm. and biographies and unauthorized biographies and and documentaries and and then and uh, extensive amount of reading in terms of what the the art of the genre. So sometimes I think uh, our, our older generation that are related to that that finds classical music or ghazal music or Bollywood music to be more authentic. I think they are misjudging the fact that this the hip hop genre itself fundamentally is also very very hard, hard. and it right. it has its own uh, you know depth to it. True. Uh, sure, predominantly a lot of rappers are just making pop music and fun music, but I'm 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 not one of those. I think I I tend to do a lot of uh, things that you introduce you to the to the versatility of the genre, and it's it's uh, it's deeper than what the surface level experience of people is. Well, we is certainly so appreciate you coming in here. We know that you're getting ready to perform tonight. You're at the Armani Hotel, uh, a huge concert. V-Man, uh, one of the friends within our family here at Talk 100.3, he's going to be performing again. Congratulations on all your work. You're an inspiration you. to so many. And uh, we do appreciate you making the time for us on a busy Friday uh, here on TSB. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Great to have you on. So that gig tonight, if you want to see Bohemia at the Armani Hotel. TSB Talk Spot Business on Talk 100.3.